hello students thanks for watching edupedia word videos this is the second section of biomolecules in which we will continue to discuss about primary and secondary metabolites polysaccharide nucleic acid proteins and enzyme action in short we will be discussing about macromolecules primary and secondary metabolites the most exciting aspect of chemistry deals with isolating thousands of compounds small and big from living organisms determining their structure and if possible synthesizing them if one were to make a list of biomolecules such a list would have thousands of organic compounds including amino acids sugars etc for reasons that are given uh, we can call these biomolecules as metabolites okay in animal tissues one notices the presence of all such categories of compounds these are called as primary metabolites however when one analyzes plant fungal and microbial cells one would see thousands of compounds other than these called primary metabolites for example mm, uh, alkaloids flavonoids rubber essential oils antibiotics colored pigments scents gums spices these are called as secondary metabolites okay while primary metabolites have identifiable functions and they play known roles in normal physiological processes we do not at the moment understand the role or function of all the secondary metabolites in host organism okay however many of them are useful to human welfare rubber drugs spices scents and pigments some secondary metabolites have ecological importance also so if we were to suffice it then primary and secondary metabolite uh, primary they have identifiable function whereas uh, secondary they have products of certain metabolic pathway okay in summary primary metabolites have identified function they play main roles or known roles in physiological function as i have told you before examples are carbohydrate amino acids fats and oils nitrogen bases they are all the examples of primary metabolites okay now come to secondary metabolite in summary they have no identif uh, i definite function they have no direct role in normal physiology just like uh, primary metabolite examples are alkaloid flavonoids rubber essential oils antibiotics colored pigments scents gums and spices okay so primary metabolites uh, their examples are amino acid nitrogenous bases proteins nucleic acids etc and secondary metabolites pigments such as anthocyanin and carotenoid drugs such as vinblastin and curcumin third is alkaloid such as morphine and codeine essential oils such as lemongrass oil lactin such as concavalin a terpenoids such as monoterpenes and toxins such as albumin and resin polymeric compounds such as rubber cellulose and gums okay now come to bio macromolecules there is one feature common to all those compounds found in the acid soluble pool that we have discussed in the previous section of this chapter they have molecular weight ranging from 18 to around 800 daltons approximately okay the acid insoluble fraction has only four type of organic compound polysaccharide lipid nucleic acid and proteins these classes of compound with the exception of lipid have molecular weight in the range of 10000 daltons and above for this very reason molecules for, uh, that is 
chemical compounds found in the living organism are of two types. One, those which have molecular weight less than 1000 Dalton and are usually referred to as micromolecules or simply biomolecules. While those which are found in the acid insoluble fraction, they are called as macromolecules or biomacromolecules. Okay? The molecules in the insoluble fraction, with the exception of lipids, are polymeric substances. Then why do lipids whose molecular weight do not exceed 800 Dalton come under acid insoluble fraction? That is macromolecular fraction. The answer is lipids are indeed a small molecular weight compound and are present not only as such but also arranged into structures like cell membrane and other membranes. Okay. So when we grind the tissue, we are disrupting the cell structure. Cell membrane and other membranes are broken down into pieces and they ultimately form vesicles which are not water soluble. Okay. Therefore, these membrane fragments in the form of vesicles get separated along with the acid insoluble pool and hence in the macromolecular fraction lipids are not strictly macromolecules. Okay. And acid soluble pool represents roughly the cytoplasmic composition. The macromolecules from cytoplasm and organelles become acid insoluble fraction. Together they represent the entire chemical composition of living tissue or organisms. Okay. In summary, if we represent a chemical composition of living tissue from abundance point of view and arrange them in class wise, we observe that water is the most abundant chemical in living organisms. Now come to polysaccharides. Polysaccharide is a, another class of macromolecules or biomacromolecules. Acid insoluble pellet also has polysaccharide as another class of macromolecules. Polysaccharides are long chain of sugars. They are threads containing different monosaccharides as building blocks. For example, cellulose is a polymeric polysaccharide consisting of only one type of monosaccharide that is glucose. Okay, so cellulose is a homopolymer, homopolysaccharide you can say. Okay, and a starch, a starch is a variant of this but present as a storehouse of energy only in plant tissues. Always note that starch is present only in plant tissue and not in the animal tissue. Whereas animals have other variant called glycogen. Okay. Inulin, inulin is a polymer of fructose. In a polysaccharide chain, say glycogen, the right end is called reducing end and the left end is called non-reducing end that we have already uh, read in our uh, previous section of this uh, chapter. A starch form helical secondary structure. In fact, a starch can hold I2 molecules in helical portion. The starch I2 is blue in color. Cellulose does not contain complex helices and hence they cannot hold I2. Okay. This is the representation of a cellulose whose monomer unit is glucose and which is present only in plant cell wall. Now come to cellulose. Plant cell walls are made up of cellulose. Paper made from plant pulp and cotton fiber is cellulosic. They are more complex polysaccharides in nature. They have as uh, building blocks amino sugars and chemically modified sugars. For example, glucosamine and acetyl glucosamine. Okay? And it is the main component of plant cell walls and uh, cotton is the purest natural form of cellulose. Okay? 
cellulose is a natural polymer. The links in the cellulose chain are a type of sugar beta D glucose. Okay. So a starch whose monomer unit is glucose which is present in plant cell wall and it is a storage polysaccharide. Whereas glycogen which is a storage reserve of animal whose monomer unit is glucose and uh, you can say that it is a storage polysaccharide. Inulin whose monomer unit is fructose. Okay. This is the representation of a cellulose. Uh, the glucose unit in cellulose are linked by beta uh, glycosidic bonds different uh, than the alpha uh, glycosidic bonds found in the starch and glycogen. Cellulose has more hydrogen bond between adjacent glucose units both within a chain and between adjacent glucose uh, unit chain making it a tougher fiber than glycogen or starch. This is why wood is so hard. Okay. Amylose and amylopectin. Amylose, um, amylose molecule consists of single mostly unbranched chain with 500 to 20,000 alpha 14 d glucose unit which is dependent on source okay amylose can form an extended shape but generally tends to wind up into a rather stiff left-handed single helix or form even a stiffer parallel left-handed double helical junction zone okay and single helical amylose has hydrogen bonding O2 and O6 atoms on outside surface of the helix with only the ring O2 pointing inwards. Hydrogen bonding between aligned chain causes retrogradation and release some of the bound water. The aligned chain may then form double standard crystallizers that are resistant to amylases. Single helix amylose behave similar to cyclodextrins by possessing a relatively hydrophobic inner surface that holds a spiral of water molecules which are relatively easily to be replaced by hydrophobic lipid or aroma molecules. It is also responsible for the characteristic binding of amylose to the chain of charged iodine molecules. Okay. Now come to amylopectin. Amylopectin is formed by non-random alpha 1,6 branching of amylose type, alpha 1,4 D-glucose structure. Okay, each amylopectin molecule contains millions of and so residues, about five percent of which form branch point. Okay, see as you can see, this is the residue. Uh, single reducing end of a amylopectin okay and uh, branching has alpha 1,6 glycosidic linkage and uh, the binding has uh, alpha 1,4 glycosidic linkage. Now come to nucleic acids. The other type of macromolecules that one would find in the acid insoluble fraction of any living tissue is the nucleic acid. These are polynucleotides together with polysaccharides and polypeptides. These comprises the true macromolecular fraction of any living tissue or cell. Okay. For nucleic acids, the building block is a nucleotide. A nucleotide has three chemically distinct components. Remember three chemically distinct components. One is heterocyclic compound, the second is a monosaccharide and the third is a phosphoric acid or phosphate, okay, which forms the backbone of a DNA, okay. The heterocyclic uh, compound in nucleic acids are nitrogenous bases such as uh, adenine, guanine, uracil, cytosine and thymine. Okay. Adenine and guanine are substituted purines 
while the rest are substituted pyrimidines. The skeletal heterocyclic uh, ring is called as purine and pyrimidine respectively. The sugar found in polynucleotides is either ribose which is known as um, monosaccharide pentose or 2-deoxyribose. A nucleic acid containing deoxyribose is called as deoxyribonucleic acid that is DNA okay while that which contains ribose is known as RNA or ribonucleic acid. This is the representation of a double helix DNA and single helix uh, RNA. Bases are nitrogenous bases in DNA are cytosine, guanine, adenine and thymine. Whereas in RNA, the nitrogenous bases are cytosine, guanine, adenine and uracil. Okay? Instead of uh, thymine, there is a uracil in RNA. That is ribonucleic acid. Okay? This is the most uh, distinguishing feature of RNA. To come to a structure of nucleic acid. Nucleic acid is a polymer of nucleotides. It is a very large molecule that have two main parts. The backbone of a nucleic acid is made of alternating sugar and phosphate molecules bonded together in a long chain phosphodiester bonds. Each of the sugar groups in the backbone is attached via the bond to a third type of molecule called as nucleotide base. Okay. This is the nucleotide base, uh, the uh, nitrogenous bases, this is a phosphate group and this is a sugar molecule attached. The phosphodiester bond links the 3 dash carbon in the sugar ring of one nucleotide to the 5 dash carbon on the next nucleotide. As you can see these are the three bases, base 1, base 2 and base 3. Base 1, uh, third dash uh, carbon in the sugar ring, first, second and third. Third dash carbon in the sugar uh, ring of one nucleotide is linked with the phosphate and this phosphate is again linked with the five dash uh, carbon on the next nucleotide. One, two, three, four and five. Okay. Only four different nucleotide bases can occur in a nucleic acid. Each nucleic acid contains millions of bases bonded to it. The order in which these nucleotides appear in the nucleic acid is the coding for the information carried in the molecule. Okay. In other words, the nucleotides serve as a sort of genetic alphabet on which the structure of each protein in our bodies is encoded. Now come to RNA, that is ribonucleic acid. Structurally, DNA and RNA are nearly identical, as I have told you earlier. As mentioned earlier, However, there are three fundamental differences that account for the very different functions of two different molecules. Both are nucleic acids. Okay? RNA is a single-stranded nucleic acid. That means it exists only in the single-stranded form. RNA has ribose sugar instead of deoxyribose sugar like DNA. Okay? RNA nucleotides have a uracil base instead of thymine as I have told you. Other than these differences, DNA and RNA are the same. Okay? Their phosphate, sugars and bases, they show the same bonding patterns to form nucleotides and their nucleotide binds to form nucleic acid in the same way. Okay? There are three types of M uh, RNA. One is mRNA. mRNA means messenger RNA. M is for messenger. mRNA, it carries information from DNA to ribosome that we will discuss it in our later classes. The other uh, characteristic is that it decides sequences of amino acid which are the construction guys of protein or you can say they are the monomers of protein. 
Second RNA is tRNA. tRNA is a transferred RNA. It carries an amino acid from cytoplasm to ribosomes. Okay. And third uh, type of RNA is rRNA. That is ribosomal RNA. R is for ribosomal. So it forms parts of ribosomes and it forms part of seeds of protein synthesis that we will discuss it in our later classes. Now come to proteins. Proteins uh, is a heteropolymer of uh, amino acids. We can say that proteins are polypeptides. They are linear chains of amino acid linked by peptide bonds. Mm, you can say that proteins are uh, polymers formed from alpha amino carboxylic acid. The alpha carbon is typically optically active and in proteins. Okay. Each protein is a polymer of amino acid as there are 20 types of amino acids present in our body. Protein is a heteropolymer. Note it. It's not a homopolymer. A homopolymer has only one type of monomer repeating n number, uh, number of times. Okay. Every cell contains thousands of different proteins which work together as tiny molecules to run the cell. Now you can think of protein as a part of a car engine. Each part looks different and they do all separate jobs to make the engine run. Okay. Always know that certain amino acids are essential for our health and they have to be supplied through our diet. Hence, dietary proteins are the source of essential amino acids. Amino acids can be essential or non-essential. The non-essential amino acids are those which our body can make while we get essential amino acid through our diet. For example, collagen is the most abundant protein in animal world and ribulose biphosphate carboxylase oxygenase that is rubis coenzyme is the most abundant protein in the world of entire biosphere. Okay. Now we will discuss about the structure of proteins. For, uh, there are four structures of protein, primary structure, secondary structure, tertiary structure and quaternary structure. Okay. Physicists conjure up the three-dimensional view of molecular structures, while biologists describe the protein structure at four levels. The sequence of amino acid that is positional information in a protein, which is the first amino acid, which is second and so on, this is called as primary structure. This is the primary structure. They have uh, um, not, uh, NH3 plus uh, end and COO minus end. Okay. A protein is imagined as a line in a primary structure. The left hand represents uh, represented by the first amino acid and the right end is uh, represented by the last amino acid. The first amino acid is called as N-terminal uh, amino acid. The last amino acid is called as C-terminal amino acid. A protein thread does not exist throughout as an extended rigid rod. The thread is folded in the form of helix. Um, you can say it's like similar to the revolving staircase. Okay. Now come to sec uh, uh -huh. information regarding the sequences of amino acids in the protein chain is called its primary structure. The primary structure of a protein determines its function and is critical to its biological activity. Okay. Now come to secondary structure. The other regions of the protein thread are folded into each other forms in what it is called as secondary structure. Okay. Stretches or strands of protein peptides have distinct characteristic uh, local structural conformation or secondary structure dependent on hydrogen bonding. Okay. There are two main types of secondary structure. 
one is alpha helix and beta sheet. This is alpha helix and this is beta pleated structure. Alpha helix, it is a right handed coiled strand. The side chain substituents of the amino acid group in an alpha helix extend to the outside. Okay. Hydrogen bond forms between oxygen of carbon oxygen bond of each peptide bond in the strand and the hydrogen of the NH group of peptide bond and amino acid below it in the helix. The H bond makes this structure especially very stable. The side chain substituents of the amino acid fit in beside NH group. I hope it's clear to all of you. Now come to beta pleated sheet. Please notice the diagram. The hydrogen bonding in a beta sheet is between strands. That is interstrand. As you can see, this is the hydrogen bonding and it is interstrand. Rather than within the strand, that is intrastrand. The sheet conformation consists of pairs of a strand lying side by side. As you can see, this is the sheet structure because it consists of pairs of strands that lie side by side. The carbonyl ca oxygen in one strand hydrogen bond with the amino hydrogen of the adjacent strand. The second strand can be either parallel or anti-parallel depending on whether strand direction is from N-terminus to C-terminus that are same or opposite. Okay. So secondary structure of an alpha helix, uh, in summary, it is a third three-dimensional spatial arrangement of amino acids in a polypeptide chain. They are held by hydrogen bonds between H of NH group and the O of CO group of the fourth amino acid down the chain. Okay, A cork screw shape that looks like a coiled telephone cord. Now the secondary structure of beta pleated sheet. Beta pleated sheet it consists of polypeptide chains that are arranged side by side. It has hydrogen bonds between the chains that is interstrand rather than uh, within the strand that is intrastrand. And the sheet conformation they consist of pair of strands that lie side by side. And the carbonyl oxygen in one strand hydrogen bond with the amino hydrogen of the adjacent strand. The two strands can be either parallel or anti-parallel depending on whether strand direction is uh, N-terminus to C-terminus are same or opposite. It has R group above and below the sheet. It is typically of uh, fibrous proteins such as silk. Okay. And always note that anti-parallel beta sheet is more stable due to more well-aligned hydrogen bond. Okay. Now the tertiary structure. Overall 3D shape of an entire protein molecule is the tertiary structure. The protein molecule will bend and twist in such a way so as to achieve maximum stability or lowest energy state. Okay? Although 3D shape of a protein may seem irregular and random, it is fashioned by many stabilizing forces due to a bonding interaction between side chain groups of amino acid. Okay? Under physiologic conditions, the hydrophobic side chains of neutral non-polar amino acids such as phenylalanine or isoleucine, they tend to be buried on the interior of the protein molecule, thereby shielding from the aqueous solution. The alkyl group of alanine, valine, leucine, isoleucine, they often form hydrophobic interaction between one another while aromatic groups such as those of phenylalanine and tyrosine, they often start to become. Okay. The acidic or basic amino acid side chain will generally be exposed on the surface of protein as they are hydrophilic. 
and tertiary structure is determined by the cross links the attraction the repulsion between the side chains that is r group alkyl group of the amino acids in the uh, peptide chain okay it arises due to folding and superimposition of various helical chains or beta sheets it has disulfide bonds also this is the most distinguishing feature of tertiary structure of protein the formation of disulfide bridges by is by oxidation of sulfhydryl group on cysteine is an important aspect of the stabilization of protein tertiary structure that allows different part of the protein chain to be held together covalently okay additionally hydrogen bond may vary or may form may form between different side chain groups as with disulfide bridges these hydrogen bond can bring together two parts of chain that are some distance away in terms of sequences okay apart from disulfide bridges sol bridges ionic interactions between positively and negatively charged sites on the amino acid side chain also help to stabilize the tertiary structure of a protein now we will discuss four types of the cross links uh, or five types of the cross links in tertiary structure as i have told you that we will discuss it in detail w first is uh, hydrophobic interaction they are the interaction between two non polar r group that is alkyl group within a protein the amino acid with non polar r group move away from the aqueous environment to form a hydrophobic center at the interior of the protein molecule hydrophobic means hydro means water and phobic means hating so because it hates water that's why it forms hydrophobic center at the interior of the protein molecule now the second cross link in the tertiary structure of protein is hydrophilic interaction hydro means uh, water and philic means loving it loves water hydrophilic interaction they are the attractions between the external aqueous environment and the r group of polar amino acid moving the polar amino acid towards towards the outer surface of globular protein where they form hydrogen bonds with water third is salt bridges salt bridges are the ionic bonds between ionized r group that is alkyl group of basic and acidic amino acids for example the ionized r group of arginine which has a positive charge can form salt bridges or ionic bond with the r group in aspartic acid which has a negative charge fourth is hydrogen bond that forms between h of a polar r group and o or n of the another amino acid for example a hydrogen bond can form between the groups of two serines or between uh, the uh, the of serine and in the r group of a glutamine and then comes the disulfide linkage or the disulfide uh, bond uh, they are the covalent bond that form between groups of cysteine in a polypeptide chain this is the most distinguishing feature of tertiary structure of protein now come to quaternary structure of protein many proteins are made up of multiple polypeptide chain they are often referred to as protein subunit the subunit may be the same as in homodimer or different as in the heterodimer the quaternary structure refers to how these protein subunit interact with each other and they arrange themselves to form a larger aggregate protein couple the final shape of protein complex is once again stabilized by various interactions including hydrogen bond disulfide bridges and salt bridges the quaternary structure refers to the way in which simple protein associate with each other resulting in the formation of a complex protein okay by different modes of bonding in secondary and tertiary structure level of levels a protein molecule appear to have a unique three dimensional structure this is the primary structure that got 
converted into secondary uh, structure. Secondary structure, uh, they have two conformation. One is alpha helix. This is the alpha helix and this is the beta pleated. Now, this gets converted into tertiary structure, which is, uh, you can say, disulfide is the most distinguishing feature of a tertiary structure. And then finally, it gets converted into the quaternary structure. Many proteins are made up of multiple polypeptide chain. They are often referred to as protein subunit. And uh, the quaternary structure refers to how these protein subunits interact with each other and they arrange themselves to form a larger aggregate protein complex. Okay. Now come to denaturation. Denaturation is, uh, th it involves the disruption of bonds or the breaking of bonds in secondary, tertiary and quaternary protein structures. They, uh, huh, heat and organic compound, that they, they break apart the hydrogen bonds and disrupt hydrophobic interactions. Acids and bases that break hydrogen bonds between polar R group and disrupt ionic bonds. Heavy metal ions that react with SS bonds to form solids. SS bond is a disulfide bond. Agitation such as whipping, it also stretches the peptide chains. Peptide chains are the one that links two amino acids or you can say that uh, pulls uh, amino acid towards each other. Uh, so agitation such as which whipping they stretches peptide chain until bond breaks. Now, uh, we will study classification of proteins. They are of two types, fibrous and globular. Fibrous polypeptides, they are arranged in bun uh, parallel bundles such as uh, in uh, silk fibers, keratin and collagen. This is the example of fibrous protein, collagen, a fibrous protein. Now come to globular protein. In this polypeptides, they become coiled and folded. For example, in albumin, globulin and hemoglobin. And it acquires a shape of uh, sphere. Okay, This is the example of uh, globular protein, myoglobin and globular protein. Globular protein, they have compact spherical shape. They carry out synthesis, transport and metabolism in the cell. Whereas uh, fibrous protein, they consist of uh, long fiber-like shapes such as alpha keratin. Ma they make up hair, wool, skin and nails. Such as feathers contain beta keratins with large amount of beta pleated sheet structures. Okay. Now, what are the differences between fibrous and globular protein? Tertiary structure of fibrous protein that is very long and very narrow and it is in the much coiled chain. Whereas globular protein, tertiary structure that is spherical and round in shape. Tertiary structure always determines the structure of a protein. Always note that. And this comes uh, this question comes frequently in pre medical test now come to water solubility fibrous proteins they are water insoluble whereas globular protein they are nearly soluble and they form collides example of fibrous proteins are collagen and keratin and uh, uh, examples of globular protein is enzymes such as catalase uh, and hemoglobin insulin where are the examples found? Fibrous protein collagen can be found in skin, bone, teeth, tendons. Keratin is the major protein that is found in hair and nail structure. Whereas uh, example of globular protein is catalase, hemoglobin and insulin. So catalase is found in cell organelles in most living organism that catalyzes the breakdown of hydrogen peroxide. And hemoglobin that is found in our uh, RPCs that transports oxygen to the different part of the body. 
and third example is insulin that is secreted from the pancreas. The structure and function is collagen, they exist as a triple helix. These strands usually come together to, to form very strong structure that resist wear and tear. Hence, they are found in joints, ligaments, tendons, muscles, connective tissue, the skin or other tissue that are exposed to heavy mechanical stress. Whereas globular protein, they are often associated with the function of transporting or act as antibodies due to their solubility. This is because the spherical structure with the non-polar amino acid bounded inward and polar amino acid outward that allows dipole-dipole interaction with the solvent that makes the protein more soluble than fibrous protein. As we have read that they are nearly soluble. This is the reason that they are more soluble.